Welcome to the Axiom. New file detected. Launching file. Alright, so I restarted the game really quick. Um, I did remember the game updated right before I started this recording session, so there that might be why it's having audio issues. Um, but yeah, I also changed out some clothes because I felt like it. What happens if I try to talk to this dude again? I can't? I guess I can't. Well, I guess we're talking to this thing then. But he's going to get away. I'm going to also, just because... I think I'm going to remove the bag from my hand. <laughs> and then let's talk to it, I guess. The creature stands on long stilt-like legs, antennae hanging from his head like a woman's hair white and curled at the tips it and is no more than five steps away from you this is he is right out of view the segmented antennae move with apprehension oh god that was a big uh audio glitch i don't know what's happening searching for something you read like tufts stick out of its joints as the insect moves its forearms, it produces a faint hiss, like a real to real cool machine noise. spinning after the tape breaks. The hiss is different from the strings you heard before. It says something else in a lower pitch. Listen carefully. You smell. You, you smell. If that's funny, uh, this is the this is the insulin the infasment. It is. The lieutenant whispers behind you. You hear the familiar ring of his jacket unzipping slowly, painstakingly. So, is he taking a photo? You glance over your shoulder. The lieutenant holds a piece of milled aluminium. He begins to pull it open extremely carefully. It's the camera. Are you sure you won't scare it off? We need a photo. No one will believe us. He continues to pull the lens open. From the corner of your eye, you see a sudden cascade of motion ripple through the phasmid's limbs. A series of ultrasonic clicks fills your ear. Hmm. I mean, if the camera scares it off, uh, hang on. Stop. Let me approach it first. I won't be one of those fools who didn't take a picture. Yeah, it stops fiddling with the camera, but does not put it down. You see the phasmid turn to him. Its mandible antennae reaching out. Its motions are quick, sudden. I have the pheromone. I Oh, I shaved? Oh, I washed off the pheromones. Oh. Okay. I have the ferrum, uh... Th okay, that's why it's approaching me. I have the pheromone. Um... I have the pheromone. I can approach it. I don't think the pheromone will do anything. His whisper turns to a skeptical hiss, but he has stopped now. The spindly mechanism turns itself back to you. It's antennae taking their measure of the air. Okay, so yeah. Shaved after pheromones. Say something to it quietly. Something like... You exist. A sudden chirrup fills the air. The walking stick moves its whole body. Limbs working independently of each other. 
like the parts of a masterfully constructed machine. The dude's gonna get away. It moves just an inch closer to you. Or does it only feel like it does? Approach carefully? Slowly, with your breath held, you take two small steps toward the phasmid. Oh, the creature okay. lets out a series of ultrasonic clicks that swarm around your head like swallows. Like laughter, a sort of happiness. Sweat drips from your brow, soaking your chest. You reek of it, your chemicals. Mm -hmm. Hissing and clicking, it extends its mandible-like antennae to greet you. You're right below it now, looking up at the colossal chitin of its white limbs. The head of the creature is crowned by reeds, and its eyes are like small droplets of water. Hello, I'm Harry. I don't really know who I am. No reply. A total ancient silence comes from its mouth, along with what appears to be some kind of foam. The stridulations of its limbs continue all around you. Stand on your tiptoes and look more closely. You were right. Little bubbles form on the mouth parts of the creature, on its segmented lower lip. It looks to be foaming, slowly. The foam is white, then yellowish. The faintest smell, like you've never felt before, like burnt roses. Kim, it's foaming. Careful, it may be poisonous. The lieutenant watches you apprehensively. The foam slowly turns a darker shade, like burnt caramel as the insect moves its mouth parts, masticating. The little bubbles begin to burst, one by one. Letting out that same smell, like summer burning. Huh. I don't think I want to touch it. Spoke to the hanged man, did not give up on Phasmid. I did cut out a couple of times when I checked the traps. Nose of parthenog parthenogenesis. I don't remember what that is. Out of curiosity. Holy crap. Only, okay, 35 minutes left. I was like, what the heck? I feel like that should be there by now. Um, let's do this one. Let's do this one first. Tell me, what are you doing? Huh. Oh, so I'm talking to it in my head. I exist too. Tell me what it's like for you. Hmm. If I tell you, what will happen? Then I will tell you what he's like for me. Hmm. I don't know if this is hell or if this is, like, life. Is both... Hmm. Tell me what existence is like for you. It's like fire. Burning. Let's go with- let's actually go with that. For me, it's fire. Burning. Fire? Where? Inside. I do not have fire inside me. In me, there is not even blood, but limb. Like sap from a worm palm. Now, I will tell you what it's like for me. For me, it is a series of half lit images. A kind of darkness being intruded upon. 
transient, dim, moist. Intruded upon by what? Shapes of plants and animals, and internal sensations. A swarm of sounds, tiny vibrations on the inside of my forearm. All speak of complexities totally beyond my understanding. So it doesn't, it doesn't understand what it is or how it works, how, how its own body. I am at the end of an narrow funnel, weightless, so light, it only feels like something to be me. In truth, perhaps I'm nothing. I certainly do not have a soul, and if I did, it will never burn. I'm glad to be me, an incredibly sensitive instrument. Few of us can begin to imagine the horror of you. It's True. all of creation reflected in your foreplay. It must be like the highest of hells, a kaleidoscope of fire and writhing glass. Eternal damnation. This is fascinating. Even when you're sleepy, and when you wake, you carry it around on your neck, with eyes open that cannot help but swallow more behind the mirror. I feel great, mute empathy for you. It was very disorienting at first, but I'm keeping my shit together. That must be incredibly hard. The orthobots are in silence and meaningless all of you. Know that we're watching. When you're tired, when a vision spins out of control, the insects will be looking on, rooting for you. So what I really like about this is like, obviously this whole sequence is really cool and fascinating, but um, this game plays a lot with concepts that seem surreal and larger than life. Like, when you, it, most of it seems grounded in reality, but then you have concepts like the pale and this phasmid. And throughout the game, we never actually saw them. We only heard people talk about them and, like, experienced it in little indirect ways. And it creates a sense that. like you're questioning whether or not these things are real you are questioning whether or not these things are possible within the rules of the world and it makes them seem bigger than they are to the point where they just seem like not actual things but just concepts so now, like, that's how it that's how it's felt throughout the whole game. But now when you're actually seeing it in front of you, it gives you like it creates a very surreal feeling. Like when I first saw the Phasmid, I was like, this is it it was very unexpected and I thought that like I don't know, the way that this game handles the rules of its world, even though I'm seeing the phasmid in front of me, it seems both like, it seems like it both doesn't fit with the world because it doesn't, it's not grounded enough, but at the same time, it feels like it perfectly fits with the world because it's just like, it's just surreal enough to fit with the tone and everything that this game has set up. And I, that is incredibly cool and interesting. The fact that this game is able to walk such a fine line between grounded and surreal. And, like, 
I think all of the mechanics, like the fact that you are talking to all the different parts of your brain and all of the different political views and all of the different, like, like the pale and this phasmid and um, everything is all about walking that line. And the game, I, f I feel like that's incredibly hard to do and the game just nails it. And when you fall, we will come to raise you up. Bud from you, banner like Blossom from you and carry you apart in a sky funeral. In honor of your passing. But not me, because I'm just a leaf eater. <laughs> Detective. Yeah? Arriving. Uh, I'm a detective. So am I. I was born to detect sucrose rewards and semiochemicals. What were you born to detect? The killer. He's in a bad state, deteriorating fast now. He thinks I am beneficial to him, but I am not. I only quicken his deterioration. You're destroying him? Very slowly, and only because he won't go away. It is meant to keep them from noticing me, to interfere with the pictures in their heads. But he has looked at me for too long, and I am destroying him. Hmm. So something in their heads, like something about this insect, is like prevents people from seeing it and i don't it's not it doesn't seem to just be the camouflage it seems to be like or or maybe it is just that maybe he's seen it but hasn't realized what he's seen and he's going crazy is this a dream what is happening no you're awake i am real light is forming me this is real. Where does this come from? All this around us, the world. Not even the birds know that. Not even the water lily. Then all we can do is beat our fists against it, day after day, with no answer. You can also eat it. If it's a leaf, you can put it in your mouth. Yum yum. <laughs> or read. I do like that it talks like a child as well. Wait, so. Too sensitive of a, of a matter. Yes, of course. The three meters tall stick insect would be offended. <laughs> what exactly are you? I am an all known species of the order Phantasmodia. Endemic to the Insolentia Isuma. For the last 350 years, I have hidden in plain sight, masquerading as the reeds, molting, cooling myself, unfolding at night to play with trash bins and boys. No one unnoticed by the first settlers and the land surveyors of the Susserin. Also, by the soldiers of the revolution and the officials of the occupation. Even the Samanese islanders who came here first, but did not stay, have not seen me. I have stayed hidden through four forms of government and two scientific revolutions until I was accidentally discovered by a detective of the cities of Malaysia in Rebojo, district of Martinez, March 51. So th th I know this is a product of my thoughts, like this insect probably doesn't actually have a concept of government or scientific revolutions or the militia, but that's insane. No, you are. The moral of our encounter is, I am a relatively medium life form, while it is you who are a total extreme madness. A volatile senior nerve system 
ominously new to the planet. <laughs> the pale too came with you. No one remembers it before you. The Nidarians do not. The radial asymmetrics do not. There is an almost unanimous agreement between the birds and the plants that you are going to destroy us all. Wait, the pale is human made? It is a nervous shadow cast into the world by you, eating away at reality. A great, unnatural territory. It definitely coincides with the arrival of the human mind. I don't have that kind of power. You're a violent and irrepressible miracle. The vacuum of cosmos and the stars burning in it are afraid of you. Give me enough time, you will wipe us all out and replace us with nothing. Just by accident. How? We suspect it will be something like the oxygen holocaust that wiped out anaerobic life 2.6 billion years ago when organisms first started breathing. Only much worse. Instead of air, you exhale thoughts. There are no trees that eat thoughts. Hmm. I don't want to know. Also, very, very dangerous. <laughs> I have to say goodbye now. I have no more thoughts. That was all. No, there is one more. Hmm. Of all the creatures I've met, you are the kindest, I guess. Thank you. I also have one more thing to say to you before you go. That woman, turn from the ruin. Turn and go forward for all mankind. I will. She was held on earth. It doesn't take a three meter stick insect to tell you that. <laughs> oh, he's still there. I can see him rocking. He better he better still be there once this conversation ends. You know I think that I think I'm gonna end this interaction here because like I don't know if I if I actually encountered something like this in real life I don't know how I would react maybe I would want to take a picture I probably would not want to touch it but um Right now, in this moment, I'm of the mindset that it doesn't need its picture taken. It doesn't need a... it doesn't need to be touched. I can just let it be, and that's okay. No one, like, has to believe that it exists. It just can exist. And the, that memory can live on in, your, in our minds without having taken a picture. So I'm going to go ahead and disengage slowly and leave. As you back off, the phasmid also takes a step back into the reeds. Something tells you the next time you engage and disengage, it will probably flee. The arthropod follows you with its antennae. As you back off, the cracks and hisses of the tape that's come to its end grow more distant. Okay. Oh, investigate the insect until it's no longer there. 
that's still my task. Um, can I talk to you at all? Do you have anything new to say? What is it? What do you want from me? I can't go. It's right there. Can you see it? No. He doesn't finish the sentence. One letter is all he can produce. His hands are numb and he stares at them. Nothing. Nothing is what he tried to say. There is nothing. Only the reeds for him. The reeds and devastation. Huh. I'll leave you be for now. I guess I keep going. Hissing and clicking, the arthropod extends its mandible-like antennae to greet you again. You're right below it, looking up at the colossal chitin of its white limbs. Its small eyes look at nothing in particular. All right, I guess I'll... Raise my hand slowly. The insect stops its stridulation, seeming to observe you. Below its crown of reeds, little pinprick eyes detect motion, glittering. The world stands still around you. Suddenly, there is silence. Put your hand down. The invertebrate comes back to life, stridulating. Sets of complex eyes follow you, moving in tandem on either side of the insect's small head. And... I think on this note... Yeah, I'm gonna stick with it. I'm not gonna take the picture. As you're turning away, the phasmid mirrors your movements, stepping on the water, the long limbs carrying its feather weight without breaking its surface. And just like that, it's gone skating away across the sea's calm mirror like a skipping stone, leaving nothing but circles on the water. And something under it, in the place it stood, bobbing there, among the reeds, a collection of items. Oh my god, the helmet. It's gone. The lieutenant looks north, with the camera uselessly hanging from his fingers. What's that in the reeds? Looks like a nest of some sort. We should have a look. It can walk on water? Apparently, yes. Like a water strider. Only... I've never seen anything like that in my life. What now? What now? The old man behind you repeats suddenly. He puts his hand into the ash. It's dirty and black. In some kind of strange, semi-catatonic state. There's not a gun hidden in the fireplace, is it? In the, in the, not the fireplace, the fire pit? Our suspect is not looking so good. We need to check on him. And... Well, I want to check the nest. I mean, I guess... Phasma's gone, check up on the deserter now. What is it? What do you want from me? I can't go. Sir, how could you not see the phasmid? See? He stares at the reeds and falls silent. Mr. Dallas? The man does not respond. He keeps staring. Black eyes glazed over and bulging from their sockets. His gap-toothed mouth 
shaking. Touch his shoulder gently. The plastic cape feels coarse. A light shiver passes the man. Other than that, no reaction. He feels small and frail. He's going into some kind of psychomotor immobility. The good news is, this solves our transportation problem, doesn't it, Mr. Dras? I guess we don't have to worry about him running away. The trembling mouth appears to sigh. Between this and the broken tire he's used for a boat, I think it's safe to leave him here, while we go and get help. It will need to be medical first, I'm afraid. What has happened to this man? Old age and shock. He looks at him, then at you. I think it's the phasmid. Yes, the arrest and the appearance of the phasmid, the combined stress. But you think it's something more than that, don't you? There's much more. Remember what it said when it spoke. Hmm. He couldn't see it, Kim. It's just the reeds for him. That could be part of the shock. But you're right, something is off here. Mr. Dras. He touches the man's shoulder. No response. No, it's not that. The, the... Before, when I, when I evaluated his state, he seemed strangely animated. He was energetic and articulate. After all these years alone, with little hygiene or medication, I would expect worse. Perhaps this animation is induced by something in the phasmid? It does not seem to be animated now it's left. Honestly, I'm ready to believe anything at this point. Maybe it is psychoactive. Huh. I mean, why not? It's three meters tall. He takes off his glasses and cleans them. Where, when he puts them back on, he's still staring at the sea. Hang on, let that me try... could be try. part of no response. Maybe this is how the Phasmid has stayed hidden all these years? Then how did we see it? Oh, you mean, whatever does this, does it over time? Teenagers, kids, drunks, sightings are brief, and hence not credible. But anyone who spends a long time with it... Yes, do you forget it's there? Mm-hmm. Mr. Dross, have you ever seen a stick insect pretending to be the reeds? The, the, the. the old man stutters. The doctors will have to look at this. I hope your station has better medical personnel than 57. This is a little advance for a nurse. Could it be there's something hormonal in his relationship to the phasmid? You mean pheromonal? He seemed a little off for a man his age. Randy. Uh... Disco, knowing of her bruises, his disposition toward Miss Oranje, I see what you mean. I talked to the Phasmid. He said it's destroying him. You should be more careful, Detective. <laughs> Are you sure it wasn't having an effect on you? Maybe. <laughs> Anyway, it's only trying to remain unseen. The degradation is a side effect. A valid hunch. Long-term exposure to something like that could be neurodegenerative. Also, please be careful when approaching a known species in the future, Detective. He's been here for a long time. Who knows how much of it in its company. He did seem distressed when it finally came to arresting him. Like he didn't want to leave this place, and the insect maybe. He looks at his notebook. I have absolutely forgotten to take notes. I hope <laughs> I remember all of this. <laughs> this will be one hell of a report. They'll think we're insane. You will have to be very convincing and very sober to make them believe, sire. Hang tight. We should think about getting back to the mainland to get help. He'll be safe here if we don't take too long. And. The return. Use the boat to return to the mainland. I still have two points. 16 minutes left. Who knows if I'll be able to... Well, I guess I could read a book. 
and just do that. Um, so let's really quick. Can we not uh, look at the nest? I thought for sure the boat was gonna, not the boat, I thought for sure I was gonna see the helmet. Huh. All right, um, let me really quick pull out a book and just read um, the, uh, And just to get the thought. Let's interact with this Dick Mullen book really quick. In your hand, you hold Dick Mullen and the mistaken identity. The brittle paperback feels fragile to the touch. Examine the cover. The cover features a pastiche of different scenes. In the foreground, a man in a dark overcoat clutches a pistol to his chest. Rising up behind him are two silhouettes wrapped in a passionate embrace. Continue. The tagline reads... Detective Dick Mullen must prove his innocence after an old friend is murdered by someone who looks just like Dick Mullen. That seems to sum up the premise nicely. Needless to say, it violates nearly every RCM regulation for a detective to investigate <laughs> a murder in which he is a suspect. Are you really reading that, detective? I'm just skimming it. That's probably for the best. Those books aren't exactly famed for the tight plotting. It's much more about the dark and deadly atmosphere. <laughs> Start reading. The story opens with a knock Aha. at the door. Detective oh. Dick Mullen is greeted by an old friend, Charlie Spillane, who's come to Mullen to ask a favor on this dark and cold night. All right, well, that did that. Spillane needs Mullen to drive him in from Vespa to a small town along the Insulindian coast. Despite his friend's apparent agitation, Mullen does as he's asked, then returns home where he passes out drunk, as he does most nights. An extremely unprofessional and hurtful stereotype that's offensive to all upstanding officers of the law. <laughs> I don't need to read this. I'm already living it. In your hand. You hold Dick Mullen and, and put, the, put it away. Get out of this. Boom. Wasteland of reality. Congrats, you're sober. It will take a while for your body to remember how to metabolize anything that isn't sugar from alcohol. So you're going to be pretty ravenous soon. Mm -hmm. Eat plenty. You can expect your coordination and balance to improve in a couple of weeks. In two months, you might start sleeping like a normal person. Full recovery will take years, though. It'll be depressing. And it'll be boring. Don't expect any further rewards or hand claps. This is how normal people are all the time. Perfect. Bonuses? Oh. Minus one physical instrument, insomnia. Minus one inland empire, sober. Minus one suggestion, boring. But plus one psyche, return of the self. No positive effects from alcohol. So... Yeah. Uh, so if I go to my skills... Yeah, my psyche's at five now. That's cool. That's actually super awesome. Um, and then let me go ahead and put another point in... Rhetoric, I guess. Yeah, let's do that. Rhetoric.
And then... I think this is where I'm going to cut it off for today. Um, this whole recording was fascinating and so cool. Um, we found the murderer. We found the weapon. We tied up a bunch of loose ends. And to top it all off, very unexpected, we found the phasmid. And... talked to it and it was a very nice conversation um so yeah I love this game this was, this is so good we have to be close to the end I, I, and I'm gonna be sad when that comes because I've loved this whole thing uh so when we come back we are going to return to the mainland and we are going to see what happens? I don't know if the guy is going to get away. I don't know if he is going to die while we're gone. I don't know, but we shall see, and I hope you guys are looking forward to it as well. So thank everybody so much for checking out the video. I really do appreciate it. If you want to be notified of when I upload the next part of the files of the archives, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and ring that bell, as well as leave a like or comment if you so desire. Thanks again, and I will see you next time. Upload successful. Click here to view previous files. Have a pleasant day.